on TV, on radio, and on your smartphone. This is Talk TV. This is Piers Morgan Uncensored, and this is the interview the entire world has been talking about. Cristiano Ronaldo, one-on-one. -on -one. From London, this is Piers Morgan Uncensored. Welcome to a special edition of Piers Morgan Uncensored. Cristiano Ronaldo is a football megastar. In my opinion, the greatest player to ever grace the game. He's also one of the most famous people on the planet. He's had the toughest year of his life on and off the pitch, facing personal tragedy and a barrage of criticism from fans, pundits, even his own coaches. Everyone else has had their say. Now it's his turn. And Cristiano is most definitely uncensored. Cristiano, let me start just by asking you, why are you doing this interview with me? Because I think it's the time to say something. Um, and because I like you. <laughs> as simple as that. Well, don't say that in public. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like you too, and I appreciate it, because I think that you've had to sustain a lot of criticism this year in particular, probably more than at any stage in your career. And I think it's time to set the record straight and to clear up a few things, not least, I suspect, for the fans of Manchester United. You must be wondering what the hell's been going on. Oh, as I, as I say many, many times, the fans, they always... I'm always going to um, say good about them. They are um, the most important things in the football. You play for them. They're always in my side. I feel that every time when I go, when I walk in the streets, the fans coming to me and um, they appreciate uh, what I did, what I do for football. And for me, it's the most important in football. The fans, for me, is everything. I want to take you back to last year, last summer. You're at Juventus and there's massive speculation about where you're going to go. And the big rumour is that you're going to go to Manchester City. So first of all, how close was that to happening? Well, honestly, um, it was close. It was close. It's something that they spoke a lot. And Guardiola say two weeks ago, I guess, that uh, they, try, um, they try hard to have me. But as you know, as my history in Manchester United, your heart, your feeling, the way, the history that you did um, before make the difference. And of course, as well, Sir Alex Ferguson. So I was, I was surprised in the same way, but it was conscious decision uh, because the heart speak, speaking loud in that moment. You were a Manchester United legend. So when you say your heart led you, it's because of that, the history you have with the club and the relationship you maintained with Sir Alex, with the fans. I think it was, it was the key. It was the, um, the difference in that moment. But I cannot be loyal if I will, I will say that Manchester City wasn't close. Uh, but I think I, I did conscious decision. Um, I don't regret at some point, and um, as you mentioned before, uh, Sir Alex Ferguson was was the key. Did as you speak? Well. Did you speak to him before you? you yes, came I back? did. Yes, I did. I spoke. I spoke with him. With him, and um, what did he say to you to try and persuade you? He said to me that uh, it's it's impossible for you to come to Manchester City. <laughs> And I say, okay, boss. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the decisions and I repeat with very, I, I was with conscience that it was a, um, a good decision. You came back and it couldn't have started better. You played at Old Trafford. Yeah, you won 4 1 against Newcastle. You scored twice. Alex, Sir Alex was there, loving it, obviously, the return of the prodigal son. Your mother was there, the return of her own son. Uh, your mother was crying, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, yes. But what a, what a comeback. Uh, how did that feel that day when, when you came off the pitch? Well, that feeling was amazing. But not only the day of the game. I, I felt before the week 
before that everything changed, the world speak about me, Cristiano back home, back where they belong. So it was a special, special moment to be back to Manchester United, to perform for uh, our fans. And of course, to score two goals was the best welcome that I received in Old Trafford. It was a memorable day and an uh, unbelievable day too. The Viva Ronaldo chant went up? Yes, Viva Ronaldo. You like hearing that? Be back. Of course I did. Yeah. As, I, as I told you before, the fans for me, they are everything. Two things happened, uh, I think, within 24 hours of you re-signing for United. One, you broke the all-time record for shirt sales in 24 hours. You actually beat a guy called Messi at PSG. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been happy about that. Of course I do. <laughs> uh, as, as you know, I'm... I'm, uh, I don't follow the records. The records follow me. So it's good. Another one in my, in my book. And the other one was the Manchester United tweet announcing that you were uh, rejoining the club was the most tweeted or most liked tweet, I think, in Twitter history. It's good. As I told you before, it was a good moment. Nobody expect because things change around, in my opinion, in 72 hours, which is... You plan or they spoke, not only Manchester City, but other clubs too, spoke about your name that you will change Juventus for another club. But Manchester United wasn't there, wasn't in, a, in that pot of that teams, but surprise everybody, even me, uh, to be honest. After a few weeks, things weren't going well at Manchester United. The club just wasn't firing. And in the end, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, the manager, got sacked. And that's within like two months of you coming back. What were you feeling about what was going on at United? And what did you feel generally about the club itself and the state that the club was in compared to when you'd been there before? Piers, to be honest, when I, I signed for Manchester United, I thought everything was changed because it's 13 years that I changed. Uh, I was in Real Madrid nine years and three in Juventus. And when I arrived, I thought everything will be different. You know, the technology, the infrastructures and everything. But I was surprised in a bad way, let's say in that way, because I saw everything was the same. Uh, and Manchester, it wasn't, it wasn't in that moment that, as you mentioned, that Oli was sunk. Michael Carrick, he, he assumed the... the the job for two, two games, Villarreal and uh, Chelsea away. Um, and everything was, was so fast, but surprised me a lot. Uh, instability in the club. Um, everything was kind of the same that I... That I they hadn't moved on. No, they, they stopped on, 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 on the clock, in my opinion, which is something that, that surprised me. I didn't expect. And... Um, Slowly and slowly, they start to change. Even even the the windows, the new players, and um, was tough. Was tough for me because I didn't expect that. And because uh, when you were there before, if Manchester United wanted a player under Sir Alex Ferguson, they normally got their man. Like now, it's a very different environment after many years of failure since Sir Alex retired. United weren't getting the top players anymore. So were you surprised by that dynamic changing as well? Because you would have been used before to them. If they wanted top players, they got them. I was surprised. I thought when I signed that they signed in that year, Sancho and Varane plus me, that things will be in the way that Manchester should be. As you mentioned well, Sir Alex Ferguson left a big gap in the club. Not only Sir Alex Ferguson, but one person that I thought make the difference uh, David Gill, the president, a very, very good man. And uh, the structure around Sir Alex Ferguson was very important too. I knew it that Manchester United wasn't the same, but I don't see that it was so big gap, so big things that go through by the last 10 years. And it was the thing that surprised me more, to be honest. It was little things like even the, the swimming pool that the players used, the saunas, all these facilities. Nothing had changed since you'd left in 2009. Nothing changed. Surprisingly, not only the pool, the jacuzzi, even the gym. 
even some points the technology, the kitchen, the chefs, which is I appreciate lovely, lovely persons. They stop in a in a time which is is it surprised me a lot. I thought I will see different things, different as I mentioned before, technology, infrastructure. Um, but unfortunately, we see many things that I'm used to see when I was 20, 21, 23. So surprised me a lot. You'd also, of course, as you said, you've been at Real Madrid and Juventus, where you saw them moving all the time to progress with technology, the latest thing to improve performance levels. So you were able to compare what you'd experienced there with what was not happening at United. In United, they, the progress was zero, in my opinion. Um, to compare with Real Madrid and even Juventus, that they follow the recent world. So the, the, the technology, especially the terms of, of training, nutrition and um, conditions of uh, eat properly and to recover uh, better than before. Surprise me, uh, Manchester right now to compare with that club, I think it's, it's behind in my opinion, which is, is something that surprised me. A, a club with this dimension um, should be in the top of the tree in my opinion and they are not, uh, unfortunately, um, they are not in that level, but I hope the next years they can reach to be in a top level. Up next, Ronaldo's scathing verdict on what's gone wrong at Manchester United.
when you look at, I mean, United have had some of the best managers in the world follow Sir Alex Ferguson, and they've all been relative failures compared to other stages of their careers. Do you think that partly that's down to the, the structural element of this, that there just isn't the support that top managers need? I don't know what's going on, but since since the um, Sir Alex Ferguson left, I saw no evolution in the club. The progress was zero. Um, for example, we have an interesting point that how the club as Manchester United after suck um, Ole, they buy, they bring sport directive Ralph Regnick, which is something that nobody understands. This guy is, is not even a coach. A bigger club like Manchester United bring sport directive surprise not only me but all the world. You know. Well, it was a ridiculous decision, wasn't it? Of course, in my opinion, it's you have to be honest. If you're not, if you're not even a coach, how are you gonna be the boss of Manchester United? It's something that I should see that Manchester United not followed not the right way to reach the successful like other teams, like for example, Liverpool, uh, or Manchester City, Chelsea, they are uh, one step behind or two uh, because of this kind of mistakes, in my opinion, that they, they should improve and change probably the, um, the staff or, or the people, uh, the directives or presidents. I don't know uh, who, is the, who is the problem there, but did it, did it show a lack of ambition to you when they replaced Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who a lot of fans liked, but he obviously wasn't delivering the big titles that United wanted and were used to. But to appoint someone like Ralph Rangnick, I mean, I'd never heard of him. And I'm thinking of Nobody. I, and I'm thinking if had you heard of him? No, of course not. You'd never heard of this guy? Nobody. And the people who I speak, nobody knew it who was him. So. Suddenly he's, you, did you call him the boss? Of course, uh, I, I, I respect, we have to call because he assumed the, the job, uh, regardless the all the coaches that I had in my career, I call them boss because if they assume the, the job, we have to call in that way. But in the end, uh, deep, deep inside me, I, I never saw him uh, as a boss because I saw some points that I never agreed and uh, he stopped in the time as well because if you're not being a coach, uh, the, the last, the next five years, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna lost the identity of to be a coach. So, surprised me a lot. But in the same way, don't surprise me a lot because if you see the structures, is keep they keep in the same. So, the coaches didn't surprise me, but it was a tough moment. What, what was extraordinary was very quickly after Rannick took over, it started briefing journalists that you weren't pressing enough, and that maybe it would be a good idea if you moved on from the club and I'm like who is this guy and why is he saying this to the man who's scoring the goals to be honest with Pierce it's something that I I don't understand it's the new coaches that coming around they think they find the last coca-cola in the desert which is that I don't understand the football that invents uh, many many years so but I respect uh, any coach have a different approach different opinions diff different mentality but kind of some points that you are you not agree so i'm always like that in my life i'm always been besides the best coaches in the world zidane and celotti Mourinho, fernando santos allegri so i had kind of some experience because i learned from them and when you see some coaches that they're coming that they want the revolution the football i not agree i i, I have my opinion they agree or they don't they disagree, but it's part of the, the business because I'm in the end of the day I'm in a club to win and uh, with the, my experience I want to help, like always, and I, some coaches they don't accept. And uh, you know, it's part of the job. Did he know what he was doing, Randnick, or not? At a club like United? No, they don't. Um, they knew with the club very well but they don't know the, of the dimension of the club inside, the history of the club, which is for me surprised me even more, which is when you, the soccer, all this Solskjaer, you should bring a top manager.
not sport director. Did you think he was right to, to get rid of Solskjaer, or would you have kept him on? Well, it's not... Uh, well, uh, I love uh, Solskjaer. I think he was a top person, because what I, what I keep inside my heart, it's the heart of the persons. And Oli, for me, is a top person. Coach, of course, he wasn't... He, he, didn't, he didn't look for what he, what he wants, it's hard, it's hard to assume after Sir Alex Ferguson, but I think he did a good job, for, for sure, he need more, more time, but I never doubt that he's going to be a good, a good coach in the future, but it was a good experience, I was, I was so pleased to work with him, even a short period. What about the younger players, and, and specifically their mentality? Because it seemed to me, just from what I was reading, that when you were originally at Manchester United as a young 18-year-old, that you had huge respect for the older players, the Keens and these guys in the dressing room, and you would soak up their experience, their exactly. wisdom and so on. Did you get that same respect, do you think, from the younger players? I don't mean that they don't respect the experienced players or the oldest players. I don't, I don't, I don't think that word is the, the best one, but... They live in a different era. Um, I can see my kid, they have 12 years old. The mentality, they are not the same. They are not suffer that. What's the difference? The anger. I think the, the anger. anger. I think that they have the things more easily. Everything it's easily. They don't suffer. And I think it's, they don't care. I don't mean only a few in Manchester United, but all the teams, all, all leagues in the world, the, the, the youngers, they are, they are not the same of my generation. But we cannot blame, blame them because it's part of the life, you know, the new generation and um, the, the new technologies that avoid, uh, they distract them for another thing. So, but they are not the same. They, are, they listen, but this is why we have two years. You listen from one side and they go away from another side. So don't surprise me, but in the same way, it's a little bit shame because if they have the best examples in front of your eyes and if they don't at least copy what you did for me, it's kind, it's kind of weird because I remember when I was 18, 19, 20s, I'm always looked to see the best players, Van Nistelrooy, Ferdinand, Roy Keane and uh, Giggs. This is why I have the successful that I have in longevity because I take care of my body, my mentality, my head because I see these guys and I learn from them. When you try and give advice to these younger players, what, what do you say to them? What do, you, what do you try and guide them to be like? I think the best advice... I'm not the kind of guys to like to give advice. I prefer to be as example. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm an example. I'm there every morning. I do the same stuff. I'm probably the first ones to arrive and the last ones to, to go out. I think uh, the, the, the details speak for itself. So, because as I, as I told you before, um, they listen one thing and in two minutes they already forgot and do it whatever they think it's, it's, it's better. This is why I say I like to lead by example. Mm. And uh, some ones, they follow me, not much, but... Uh, you see, I find that, I just find that incredible. That if I was a young footballer, and I had Cristiano Ronaldo at my club, that I wouldn't want to spend every second watching him, listening to him, observing the way you go about your business. And yet, from what you're saying, clearly, that's not, they're not interested. They don't care. Some ones, yes, but most of them, no. But for me, it's not surprising. me. Uh, don't surprise me because they're not going to have longevity careers, in my opinion. It's impossible. It's impossible. To see, for example, my generation, you see many players, they, they reach 36, 37, 38 in the high level. I think this generation, you're going to count by your hands how many are going to reach in that level. Because this years of preparation, it helps a lot. Who are the players in the world that you most admire for their mental strength, their attitude? It's it's difficult question because I I'm, I'm always can say what I see from my eyes, for example, if you tell me what I see, for example, in Manchester United, I can mention probably Dalot, Diogo Dalot. His example is young, but he's very 
very professional and I'm not doubt that he's gonna reach he's gonna have longevity in the football because he's he's young, he's smart, intelligent and he's very professional. We have a few ones more but like him it's it's difficult to see probably Martinez, um Casimiro's thirties. Uh, um but I will say that a lot. Coming next, Ronaldo opens up on the toughest moment of his life. This is Talk TV. So the running's come then, it's your second manager, it's not working, the results aren't great. You're still scoring goals regularly for Manchester United. You're about the only one who is. But then you get hit by a, a, an awful episode in your life, probably the worst time of your life, where your partner... Georgina, she's pregnant with twins and is actually giving birth to these two babies and your baby son doesn't survive and I don't think I can imagine I have four kids, you have a lot of children you know, you can't imagine a worse thing to happen than to go a full term of a pregnancy particularly for the poor mother in that case but also for you what was that like for you that, that time in your life it's probably the worst moment that I passed through my life since my my father died. You know, uh, when you have a kid, that you expect that everything will be normal, and you have that uh, problem. It's it's hard, you know, as human being that I am in 
Georgina, why we had a quite difficult moment because we don't understand why happened to us. Uh, was difficult, to be honest. Was was very very difficult to to understand what's going what's going on in that in that period of our life. As you know, the football carry on. They are so fast, many competitions. The football don't stop. We are many many competitions. And pass through in that moment was probably the most difficult moment that I had in my life. Me and my my family, especially Gio, that was was tough. She said um, she was giving an interview about the new series of her TV show. And she said in an interview, a big piece of my heart shattered. And I asked myself how I could carry on. I had the answer nearer than I thought. I looked into the eyes of my children. And there I saw the only way of doing it being all together. Yeah, I, I, I saw too. Yeah, this is why what we did. We, I grew up my my family, especially Gio and... Um, we had the difficult moments, but we said, listen, we have more, more kids. We have one that born, Bella, that we have to be happy to. I mean, such a difficult situation, again, where you're mourning the terrible loss of your little baby boy, but also celebrating the it's birth crazy. of your beautiful yeah. daughter. I try to explain sometimes to my family and even my close friends, they say, I never felt to be happy and sad in the same moment. Yeah. I never felt. It is hard to explain. Um, so difficult. So difficult. Mm. It's you don't know if you cry or you don't know if you smile, yeah. because it's something that you don't know how to react. Uh, you don't know what to do, to be honest. And of course, I remember very well that I look like I don't know the word that to define what I felt in that moment. But it's it's crazy feelings, it's crazy emotional. But as I told you before, I, I, I have to, to hold that we had at least Bella, yes. which is, is the most important. One die and one survive. But it was, it's difficult to explain. Uh, How did you explain it all to your other children? They must have been so confused about it. In the that. beginning, uh, Gio arrived in home and uh, the kids start to say, where's another baby, where's another baby? Of course, Cristiano, I had conversation with him in the, in the day uh, because he's 12 years old, he knows, he, he understands everything. And I had a nice conversation with him. We cried together in his bedroom and he explained and it's kind of, he didn't understand. He understand, but in the same way, he, he was a little bit confused. The other ones in the beginning, in the table, the kids start to say, "Mom, where is the um, uh, the other baby?" Blah blah blah. And Gio, in the beginning, they start to say because you know she she had a little bit belly because they had two. It's hard process. And after one week, I say, "You know, let's 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 be frontal. Let's be honest with the kids. Let's let's say that uh, Angel, which is the name, they go to the to the heaven." It's better to say in that way, yeah. and uh, we start to use in that in that uh, in that way. And the kids always understand when we had shots in the table, and they say, "Daddy, I did this for Angel," and they they point out for the for the sky, which is I I say and I and I like it the most because you know it's part of the lives, and I I'm not gonna lie to my kids to say the truth, which is, is was a difficult process, but in the same way. I become more, more father, more friendly of them. They become more, more close to his daddy, especially me with the Georgine as well. Yeah, I was I going to ask you that because these things they can, they can make or break relationships, because the grief can be so intense. It can drive couples apart, or it can bring them closer. In my case, it was more, was better in that way. I become more friendly. Of Gio, I was of her friend, but I see more, more lovely, for her and for my, for my kids, and I start to see the life with a different perspective. You understand, which is, is coming the point of, if you're gonna ask me for sure, the pre-season moments, yes. for example, why I didn't go to the pre-season. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna come to that. Yeah. But it was, just to finish in that, that chapter was the most difficult moment the last since my dad died 
it was this moment that I passed through the last six months. Do you feel your son is, is with you in spirit? Do you feel for that? sure. For sure. He's, Ashes is with me, like my daddy. They are here in really? my house. Yes, yes. It's something that it's, I want to hold for the rest of my life and not tr throw to the, to the ocean or to the sea. I keep with me. They are next to my, to my daddy. I've, I didn't know if you, you check. I have a small church down. And I oh, you do? Have, yes, I do. Like a little chapel? Yes, huh? chapel. And I keep my daddy and my son. Do you talk to them? Yes, I do. Um, I, I, I talk with them every time. And that they are in my side. They, are, you know, they help me uh, to be a better man, to be a better person, to be a better father. And it's something that I'm really, really proud that the message that they send me, especially my, my son. Amazing. You had an extraordinary reaction from football fans, obviously from Manchester United, but I think you must have been just so surprised by the outpouring of not just support, but Liverpool fans sang on the seventh minute of their next game, you'll never walk alone, the cop, the great infamous enemy of Manchester United. What did you feel when you heard that? I never ever expect that, never. I had the opportunity now to, to say, all English community, thank you a lot for that kind of that they had with me, not only Liverpool, but all England. I felt... I was at Arsenal when you played and on the seventh minute, the whole crowd I received. I received a, a letter from the Queen family as well. Really? Yes, I do. Which is... His, from the Queen herself? Or? Yeah, family. Yeah. And um, surprised me a lot. Offering their condolences? Yes. Wow. Unbelievable. This is why I say I respect a lot the English community, English people, uh, because they've, they've been very kind uh, with me. And in that difficult moment of my life was spectacular. The way they treat me, me and my family uh, in that difficult moment. I, I should say straight to the crown thank you, thank, thank you to the old English community that helped me in that moment. The, when the Queen sadly died, in September, you posted a very nice tribute to her. Was part of the reason because of, of what they had of course, been like with you? Of course, they've been so kind of with me and um, this is why I did what I did. Uh, but it was unbelievable moment. I never ever gonna forget that moment. You have a little girl, Bella. She's six months old now. Must be a, a great joy amid all that terrible sadness. Unbelievable, it was. Another member in the family, they are the, the shine of the house and uh, we are so proud. Me, uh, Georgina and all, all my kids, they are, they are very, very proud for them. They are, they are spectacular, a beautiful uh, girl and we are so happy. We are so, so happy. We are, we are uh, happy fathers. You're going to have more? I'm not thinking now to thinking more kids. I think we, we're done, but... We never know. The future, only gods know. But right now, we all want to, to have a break, to enjoy these ones, because they are little, Bella 6, and the rest, they are 5, and Cristiano 12. We want to enjoy a little bit of these ones. Let's see the future. It's very difficult to play top-level football at the best of times. It's a hard business in full public glare of millions of people watching. To have to go back and play after this, must have been incredibly hard for you, uh, even with your mental strength. How did you find that? Difficult, very difficult to, to play after that. But as I always have good support from my family and Georgina told me, go, go to play, go enjoy to do what you like to do. We're going to help for you to forget, forget a little bit the situation. It was difficult, but in the same point, I think helps helps for you to you know, to don't thinking much about that, even to training was good. But as you know, the, um, the football going so fast and, you know, trainings, games, uh, even the national team, <clears throat> the things going so fast, you don't even have a time to settle and say what's going on, you know, because the things going so fast. <clears throat> but was good help. Uh, Georgina helped me a lot to give me that possibility to say. She's, she's a very strong woman. 
Yes, you do. Georgina. Yes. yes. I mean, really strong. Yes. To, to just to be your partner is probably not an easy time a lot of the time with all the attention all the time. But to go through what she's gone through and still we help and be there. We help you. each other. But she struggled uh, when, he, when she was young, which is she now, she look at life in a different, with a different eyes. Even she's young, but she suffer, you know, she's she born in Argentina. She have his issues with his family as well. She live alone. <clears throat> she have interesting uh, life yes. and histories as well, history. And she helped me a lot. She's very mature for his age. We, we help each other. Sometimes when I'm a little bit down, she push me up. And I do it to the other side. So we are a nice couple. We help each other. So I'm really pleased that she's, in, she's on, on my side. Any, any movement on the, the wedding bells, Christiana? I'm not thinking now about that, but <laughs> I can see in the future. I think I deserve, she deserves, but it's something that's com not coming now in my, in my plans, but in the future, I, yes, yes, I want. Coming next, Wayne Rooney, Gary Neville. Ronaldo's got a message for both of you. Four days after this terrible time in your life, United get a new manager, Eric Ten Hag. Did you know much about him? A little bit uh, through Ajax, the job that he did for Ajax. You end the season with 24 goals for Manchester United, including 18 in the Premier League, six in the Champions League. You were second in the Golden 
boot for the uh, English football. I mean, by any normal yardstick, that's an incredible performance. And yet you were still getting criticised. It was almost like, well, it's got to be your fault, even though you scored all the goals. Were you as bemused as I was that you were becoming the focal point for the criticism? I think it's easy, it's easy to point out when you want to cover other things, to, put, to point out Cristiano Ronaldo. It's, it's, it's easy. Everyone now that that press, they want to... They want to put me in the first page because they know they will sell more, the interesting will be different. And I'm used to live like that because when I was 37, uh, I know and I learned many things. Um, when you are in the down of the wave, when you are in the top of the wave, it's, you don't realize and you don't see things that you don't see before, which is I appreciate to have bad moments to see which people is in your side, who criticize you more, because they're looking for that. Um, they don't like to see successful people. The people only try to bring negativism. And I felt the last four or five months that not only with, for me, but even for my family as well, for Georgina, especially around the world, the press criticize me even more. I, I, sometimes I don't... I don't understand why. Even uh, Portuguese press, that they criticize, criticize me a lot. I don't understand, but I still believe that the jealousy is part of that. Um, they want to cover many things that helps to, to, to shine other things. But listen, Pierce, I know I'm 20, uh, 21 years in the top of the game, so I know how it takes. So for me, it's not a problem. It's, it's, it's hard when you are a little bit down to listen to this criticism. Do you, do you read it all? Do you read newspapers? Do you read social media? A good thing that I have, it's I don't like to read because I know 90% uh, of the times they lie. They are garbage. The press, they are garbage. Not all of them, but most of them. They don't say the truth. Um, and they lie, they constant lie and they constant attack me and my family. They're always negativism against my family. Why I'm going to read? Because I know they try to, to, to make me feel bad, me and my family, which is, is, is something hard to deal. But in the end of the day, I understand. But it's, it's really, really hard. The problem you have is you're too famous. You are the most followed human being on Instagram. That you have, I just checked, 495 million followers. I have just under 2 million on Instagram. 8 million <laughs> on Twitter, so I'm catching you on Twitter slowly. But, but 400, you're nearly at half a billion followers on Instagram. I mean, that's insane. You're bigger than all the Kardashians put together. It's good. It's good. I feel proud for that. It means, it means a lot for me because it means that people like me too, I'm charismatic, I think, why I'm the number one? Sometimes I ask, ask that question to myself, why me and not another one? Because why do you think I, it is? To be honest, I, not just only because I, I play good football, because everyone knows, but I think the rest is, is relevant. You have to be charismatic, people have to, to feel some connection with you. I think to be Good looking helps too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have the same problem. Yeah, I feel the same way. To be honest, Chris, I don't know the real reason, but I think I'm charismatic and I'm 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 a petitive fruit. I don't know if we a what a fruit that oh, yeah. people want to bite. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know the, the how, how you can say in English. Any particular fruit or let's like say nice peach? strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know the. The reason. I mean, what's incredible to me is the, the power you have. Appetite, to, to appetite. Appetite. Appetite fruit. Appetite fruit. I don't know if it makes sense in English, but if you, it doesn't make sense, you'll learn. I'll, I'll research appetite fruit, yeah. Okay. I mean, I have a pinned tweet, and it's you telling me I have good abdominals, which is a very good observation. <laughs> and it's only 10 seconds long. It's had 43 million views, this clip. <laughs> So thank you, uh, because oh, 43 million people have heard the guy who actually has, has got good abdominals <laughs> tell me I've got good abdominals. But it showed me the, the sheer firepower 
you have in that what in that world of social media it's just extraordinary is 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 what i what i tell you before um i have uh, i have good things which is is you you can sell your own product let's say in that way but you have to to deal with many obstacles in your life too do you care if people hate you i mean a lot of people love you but obviously a lot of people don't you're so big you're going to get both but do you care about the ones who i care hate cristiano ronaldo i care the people who like me i'm not waste time for the people who don't like me i think it's waste of time these these people they are they are not interesting on my life i'm i, I like to be around around the people who love me i don't i don't waste my time to to see the criticism of people who is next to me ex players for example uh i well, don't I mean, care one of your that. biggest critics has been and i'm surprised about this me too wayne rooney for who, example who you played with for many years very successfully and were good friends with him and yet all this year three or four times he's come out and attacked you in the media Pierre said and understand uh, you should ask this question to him but i don't know um I don't know why he criticizes me so bad or I don't says, believe he that says, he's jealous of me. He says your behavior is unacceptable. United should sell you, you know, blah 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 blah. I mean, it's way rude. It's surprising. Like a... It was one year ago or six months ago here in my house. He pick up his kids here and invite Cristiano to go his house to play football. I don't. I really don't understand people like that or if they wanna be in the cover of the of the paper of the news or they want a new jobs or whatever. Is it jealousy as well perhaps that you're still playing and still in the United United probably, United probably Red Shirt? because he finished his career with 30s so I'm still playing high level I'm not going to say that I'm looking better than him which is is, is true but <laughs> <laughs> but it's, that it's, is inarguable I mean there's no contest is is hard to listen that kind of criticize and negative about people who play with you for example Gary Neville as well yeah I mean Gary Neville you blanked him the other day uh on the pitch and he looked quite upset actually um because obviously he likes being your friend but he's been pretty critical of you as well when the, you the have people when... can have can have his own opinion but they don't really know what's going on for example inside the 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 training ground and Carrington area or even my life they should listen not only one point of view they have to listen my point of view as well because it's easy to to criticize but if you don't know the old story it's 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 easy you know but it's peace as i say before it's it's part are they of, still friends of yours or do you have a line where they are not my friends uh, they are colleagues we play together they they're not coming we not have a dinner together for example but as i told you peace before it's part of my journey they kill they keep cri- criticize me negativism uh, every time so i follow i continue my my trip and uh, i have to catch up the people who like me some of your ex colleagues have been incredibly supportive rio ferdinand has always got your back roy keane always has your back whatever happens he's always supported you and has continued to do so does that mean a lot to you it means a lot because they i was in the dressing room with them they are part of my journey in football as well uh, as i mentioned many times roy keane for me was my best captain ever Rio Ferdinand helped me a lot. He was my neighbor. I was his neighbor. So very very good guys. Not just because they speak good about me, but they they was there in the dressing room. They are football players. They know how players thinking and the behaves etc. And to listen ace ex uh, colleagues or teammates to criticize you and they always see uh, one point of view. Do you feel a bit but do you feel a bit betrayed when they do that because yes, you because you play together it's easy it's easy to criticize i don't know if you have a job in television that they must criticize to a, to be more famous i really don't understand do you think they use your name a bit to get attention i think they take advantage of that because they are not stupid and i really understand and i have to carry on with my life with criticize criticize or or when the people speak good about you but it's hard when you see people who was in the dressing room with you criticizing that way it must hurt it's not good yeah. yes i did but not hurt i i'm not going to be 
more or slim. I'm not gonna sleep bad because of the criticize, but it's not good to listen that. Disappointing. A little bit, yes, disappointing. Next on Uncensored, expect fireworks in the explosive second half of my 90 minutes with Ronaldo. Your baby daughter's in hospital. And the president of uh, Manchester United didn't believe the empathy don't exist. The Glazers, they don't, they don't care about, about the club. What would your message be to Manchester United fans? The fans, for me, will be always in my heart. He was deliberately provoking you. I didn't felt that he had respect for me. Cristiano Ronaldo's 12 rules to life. Why not? Imagine the rest of the rats, they're going to criticize me too. <laughs> I'm just trying to work out how Wayne Rooney could hate you even more. They only speak about the black chip, which is me. They're trying to force you out. Yes, not only the coach, but the other two or three guys there around the club. Yes, I feel betrayed. If you don't have respect for me, I'm never going to have respect for you. You think England have a, have a chance? I have a chance beside Portugal, in my opinion. That's it, you retire, right? Yeah, I retire. 100%. You won't want to miss it. Whatever you're up to, keep it uncensored. Join me, Jeremy Cowell, Monday to Thursday at 7, when I'll be taking a common sense approach to stories that really do matter to you. And you know me, gang, I don't shy away from difficult conversations, so nothing is off limits. So if you're a free thinker and you want a show that reveals the truth behind today's headlines with absolutely no agenda, join me on Jeremy Carl Live. It's on Monday to Thursday at 7 right here on Talk TV.